As war loomed in Europe, the Royal Air Force found itself lacking a long-range fighter with a significant amount of firepower. In 1938, the Bristol Aeroplane Company recognised the urgent need to fulfil this role and proceeded on a private venture to design a long-range aircraft that would fulfil this requirement. The design team was led by Leslie George Fries and significantly based off the Bristol Beaufort bomber, utilising the same wings, undercarriages and tail units. Additionally, it used the same jigs as the Beaufort, so that during manufacturing, switching between the two aircraft types could be done quickly and easily at short notice. The bow fighter would also differ from the Beaufort in the power plant utilised, with the bow fighter being equipped with a 1500 horsepower Bristol Hercules engines, instead of the 1000 horsepower Bristol Taurus engines found on the Beaufort. Armament for the new long range heavy fighter would consist of four 20mm cannons in the nose of the fuselage. Bristol attached the designation Type 156 to the bow fighter design. By November 1938, the Air Ministry had given the go ahead for four prototypes and in March 1939, the new aircraft were named the Bow Fighter. Such was the Air Ministry desperate for a heavily armed long-range fighter that on the 3rd of July 1939, the Air Ministry placed an order for 300 Bow Fighters under specification F-1739 before the prototype had even flown. The first prototype powered by Hercules 1 SM engines took to the air for the first time on the 17th of July 1939 with Captain Cyril Unwin at the controls. The second prototype was powered by the Hercules 1M and the third and fourth were fitted with the Hercules 2 engines. The first production aircraft, Bow Fighter Mark 1F, F for fighter, powered by Hercules 3 or Hercules 11 engines, arrived at frontline squadrons in September 1940, replacing Bristol Blenheim Mark 1. The first Bow Fighters off the production line only had four 20mm cannons in the nose of the fuselage. However, after the first 50, six 303 machine guns were added in the wings, four in the starboard wing and two in the port side. Pressed into the night fighter role, just as the blitz began, Mark 1 Fs were equipped with Mark 4 airborne interception radar, and compared to other night fighters in service, the bow fighter had the advantage of being able to carry the bulky equipment with limited sacrifice to either firepower or speed. This made it a very effective and successful night fighter. On the 25th of October 1940, a bow fighter of number 219 squadron shot down a Dornier DO-17Z, claiming the first aerial victory for the type, and on the night of the 19th, 20th of November, number 604 squadron recorded the bow fighter's first radar-assisted victory, shooting down a Junkers Ju-88. The introduction of ground-controlled interception radar stations in January 1941, allowed for the bow fighters to be utilised much more effectively. The Mark II was powered by two 1300 horsepower Merlin twinning engines. The change in power plant occurred for a few reasons. Firstly, the trials of the bow fighter prototypes in April 1940 had produced 335 miles per hour at 16,000 feet, but it became evident that bow fighter's speed at altitude was disappointing. To improve performance, Bristol suggested the Hercules 6 engine, but that was still very early in development. The Rolls-Royce Griffin was also suggested, but they had been reserved for the Fairy Firefly. Secondly, there was worry about supply shortages of the Hercules engines, due to them also being utilised for production of the short Sterling. Thus, it was decided the Mark II would be powered by the Rolls-Royce Merlin 20 engines. The Mark II entered service in April 1941 with it eventually equipping nine night fighter squadrons. Mark IIs also served in electronic countermeasures with number 515 squadron. Mark IIs were found to be underpowered and thus the Merlin engine was never utilised in future variants. Later production models introduced a 20% increase of the tailplane and a tailplane with a 12 degree dihedral. This was designed to address longitudinal instability that was particularly present during takeoff. All production versions following would include this addition. The Mark III and IV ended up as cancelled projects. Both were to introduce a slimmer fuselage. A Bolton Paul BPA-1 turret with four 303 machine guns was mounted behind the cockpit of two Mark IIs, while the wing-mounted 303 machine guns and two cannons in the nose were removed. This was designated the Mark V. 
It was tested operationally, but the Mark V was never put into production, with two prototypes being the sole example. In 1941, as fighting became more intense in the Mediterranean, and then in April, the German invasion of Greece, RAF Coastal Command was in desperate need for a long-range fighter. Bristol submitted a modified version of the bow fighter Mark IF as a solution, with modifications including the removal of the six 303 machine guns in the wings in exchange for additional fuel tanks, and a fully-fledged navigator's position was added to the fuselage. These would be designated Mark I Cs, C for coastal, with 300 ordered. As a stopgap measure while Coastal Command waited for the new Mark I Cs, was the conversion of 50 Mark I Fs to carry additional fuel tanks in the front fuselage. Delivered to No. 252 Squadron, the squadron moved to Malta in May 1941, and then Egypt in June, where it was joined by No. 272 Squadron. Field modifications allowed the bow fighters to carry either a 250-pound or 500-pound bomb under each wing. Here, bow fighters were utilised to attack German and Italian shipping, as well as attacking airfields and strafing enemy positions in the Western Desert. It excelled in both roles, seeing considerable success. Back home, four squadrons utilised Mark 1Cs for convoy protection duties, mainly from bases within Scotland. These were quickly upgraded to the newer Mark 6Cs. The next major production version was the Mark 6. The Mark 6F was a fighter variant, while the Mark 6C was designed for coastal command. The fighter variant introduced a Hercules 6 engine, improving performance mainly at altitude, as well as AI Mark 7 and Mark 8 radar. Mark 8 radar was housed in a distinct thimble shaped radome attached to the front of the cockpit. Range also increased and both variants of the Mark VI had the ability to carry two 250-pound bombs. Coastal Command's Mark VI differed from the fighter variant with its power plant being a modified Hercules Mark VI, designated Mark 17, that increased lower altitude performance. Mark VI Cs also had greater fuel capacity. Both variants of the Mark VI began to enter service in early 1942. The Mark 6F registered its first victory on the 5th of April 1942 by the Fighter Interception Unit, and shortly afterwards, Mark 6Fs started to enter service with numbers 68 and 604 squadrons. 14 night fighter squadrons would utilise both fighters Mark 6F. As Luftwaffe night raids began to lessen, both fighters were utilised in a range of offensive measures over the continent attacking rail and road transport targets, as well as doing escort and decoy missions with Bomber Command. From 1943, the bow fighters within the UK began to be retired from night fighting duties, being replaced by the Havilland Mosquitoes. By mid-1944, bow fighters ceased to operate as night fighters within Europe. Coastal Command utilised the Mark 6C to great effect equipping home-based squadrons that undertook a range of anti-shipping operations along the west coast of Europe. Regular operations included attacking shipping and submarines in the North Sea and Bay of Biscay, as well as long-range patrols over the Bay of Biscay searching for Junkers Ju-88 and Fokker Wolf FW-200 bombers. During 1942, the bow fighters started to arrive in the Far East and the Pacific. In the Far East, operating from bases within India, three squadrons utilised bow fighters as a night fighter and ground attack aircraft against the Japanese forces in Burma and Thailand. Here they were utilised to great effect against Japanese airfields, transports and communications. The low engine noise of the Hercules engines, combined with the low level operations of bow fighters, supposedly earned it the nickname the Whispering Death from the Japanese. The Mark 7, 8 and 9 were designs meant for production in Australia. However, none of these marks were ever produced. Australian bow fighters will be covered later on. With Coastal Command looking at replacing their standard torpedo bomber, the Bristol Bowfed, a bow fighter Mark 6C was converted to carry a torpedo and in May 1942 was tested. The tests were considered successful and 50 Mark C interim torpedo fighters, also known as Mark 6 ITFs, were ordered and entered service in late of 1942 with number 254 squadron. Mark 6 ITFs also had the addition of Youngman dive brakes. 
The bow fighter's first success with a torpedo occurred in April 1943 with the sinking of two merchant vessels off the coast of Norway by bow fighters of No. 254 Squadron. In the summer of 1943, a hundred bow fighters arrived to the United States Army Air Force squadrons operating in the Mediterranean. Here they mainly operated in the nighttime interception role, but also in convoy protection and ground attack during the day. Eventually the bow fighter was replaced by Northrop P-61 Black Widows in December 1944, although bow fighters fought over France and Italy until the end of the war. The TF Mark X followed next and would become the most produced version with just over 2,200 being built. Mark 10s were powered by the Hercules 17 engines so they were optimised for low altitude. Mark 10s could also handle a variety of weaponry. Under the belly of the aircraft, a torpedo or two 500 pound bombs could be loaded, while under the wings, a 250 pound bomb or four 90 pound rockets could be fitted to each wing. Early production versions had ASV radar, but later production aircraft had the AI Mark 8 radar fitted in a thimble or dome attached to the front of the cockpit. This was utilised to track down enemy shipping and submarines, and in a 48 hour period, five German submarines were sunk by bow fighters of numbers 236 and 254 Squadron. With the modifications, the Mark 10 weighed some 50% greater than originally planned when the bow fighter was designed. Mark 10s began entering service in early 1943. The Mark 11 lost the ability to carry torpedoes, but was otherwise very similar to the Mark 10. Only 163 were built of this type. To maximise the bow fighter, Coastal Command set up dedicated strike wings to undertake anti shipping operations. Royal Air Force, Royal Canadian Air Force, Royal New Zealand Air Force, and Royal Australian Air Force bow fighters were used. The North Coast Strike Wing was one such strike wing, formed during September 1942 and comprised of numbers 142, 236 and 254 squadrons and ended the war with a claim of 150,000 tonnes of enemy shipping. The Mark 12 was based off the Mark 11 but would have had better range, however the Mark 12 was never put into production. In 1939, Australia had placed orders for bow fighters with the first example arriving to the Royal Australian Air Force in April 1942. 217 British built bow fighters would be used by the Royal Australian Air Force and were a combination of Mark 1s, 6, 10 and 12s. They began operations in 1942 with No. 30 Squadron operating in New Guinea and No. 31 Squadron in Northwest Australia. Number 30 Squadron bow fighters alongside Royal Australian Air Force Bowfords, A20 Bostons, and United States Army Air Force B-25 Mitchells, B-17s and A-20 Bostons saw action in the Battle of the Bismarck Sea. Australia also manufactured bow fighters. In January 1943, the Australian War Cabinet gave approval to production of 350 bow fighters to be manufactured by the Department of Aircraft Production, DAP. This was logical as DAP were currently manufacturing bow fits, so it wasn't overly difficult to switch between manufacturing of the two. In March 1943, the first of 55,000 microfilms arrived in Australia from Britain, containing some 500,000 blueprints. DAP bow fighters were designated the Mark 21 and were very similar to the bow fighter TF Mark 10, with the notable removal of the ASV radar, torpedo carrying equipment, and the dorsal fin. Additionally, instead of six 303 machine guns in the wings, Australian bow fighters had four 50 inch Browning guns and were powered by Bristol Hercules 18 engines. The Hercules engines had to be imported entirely from Britain, and in case of a shortage of Hercules engines, a British built bow fighter Mark 1C was converted to take the right double cyclone engine. Flying in August 1944, testing was successful, but the Hercules supply was always sufficient, and thus the double cyclone was never adopted for production. The first Australian bow fighter took to the air for the first time on the 26th of May 1944. The first operational sortie by a Mark 21 bow fighter occurred in September 1944, and eventually five squadrons would be equipped with the type. It proved once again to be a successful and devastating attack and strike aircraft, seeing action in New Guinea, the Salibas, and the Philippines. 
production finished at the end of 1945 with a total of 364 DAP Bowfighter Mark 21s being built. Post-war, Bowfighters were kept in Royal Australian Air Force service but relegated to a target towing operation. By 1955-56, majority had been retired, although two were kept on for missile aerial recovery duties at Woomera, with a final Bowfighter Mark 21 being taken out of service in December 1957. The final significant variant of the Bowfighter was a TT Mark 10. These were Mark 10s converted to target tugs. Bowfighter TT Mark 10s were served with the Royal Air Force until 1960, when they were finally retired and thus bringing an end to a highly distinguished service career. Bowfighter survivors are quite rare today. Currently, there are no airworthy bowfighters in the world. However, there is one under restoration to flight in the UK with a fighter collection and another in New South Wales, Australia with the Historical Aircraft Restoration Society. A bowfighter is on display at the RAF Museum Hendon, National Museum of the US Air Force and the Moorabbin Air Museum, which is capable of grand running. Restoration work is also occurring on examples at the Canada Air and Space Museum and the National Museum of Flight in Scotland. Another bowfighter can be found in the Camden Museum of Aviation, a private collection in Australia. The bowfighter served with 52 squadrons and post-war was exported to the air forces of South Africa, Turkey, Portugal, Dominican Republic and Israel. It also saw action in the Greek Civil War. In total, 5,562 bowfighters were produced in Britain with an additional 364 in Australia. Known for being a rugged and hard-hitting strike aircraft, it served with distinction in all major theatres of the Second World War in a wide variety of roles. Aviation author Stuart Wilson notes in his book, Aircraft Made in Australia, Volume 2, quote, the Bowfighter was probably the finest torpedo and strike aircraft of its day, end quote. Indeed, the Bowfighter was a versatile and highly successful strike aircraft in all theatres of war.